In this video, we are going to take a look at the parts that we removed from this 1931 Model A transmission and figure out which ones we need to replace and why. Before we do that, though, I want to spend a little bit of time on the basics of gear geometry that's in this car and also talk a little bit about the kind of gear failures and damage you can expect. Virtually all gears you will ever encounter are based on the involute of a circle. Now, there's a fair amount of math to do this, geometry actually, but I'm going to spare you all that, and we will talk about this thing conceptually. Imagine you have a spool of thread. As you unwind the thread, the end will trace this involute shape ever bigger as more thread unwinds. You can also think about it the other way, as if you're winding up the thread. From a geometric perspective, this shape is defined by a series of arcs incrementally calculated from right triangles. When you put involute curves together for circles of the same diameter, the two curves will always share a single point all along the profile between the two circles. You can kind of think of this as one spool of thread is being unwound and another is being wound up at exactly the same time. If these were gears with the same pressure angle, number of teeth, and pitch, there would be only rolling between the teeth, no sliding, extremely efficient. But that never happens, because gears are almost never the same size. When these variables differ between the two gears, more and more sliding is introduced as they mesh together. The involute profile on gear teeth provide a very efficient transfer of motion. As I said earlier, virtually every gear profile on the planet uses this involute geometry. Burr gears, like we have in the Model A transmission. Helical gears, Ford began to use these later in the 30s. Beveled gears. Worm gears. Internal ring gears. Any gear you find. This animation shows the contact point for each gear tooth along a line of action between the two gears. Where on the gear teeth, obviously, will occur along this contact point as the gear teeth roll and slide together. When you look at gear teeth in a three-dimensional way, that contact point is actually a contact line. Wear and damage to the teeth will occur across this line along the face and the flank of each gear tooth as they engage with the other gear. A lot of things can go wrong with gears, uh, but I'm only going to talk about things I've seen in Model A transmissions. Plastic flow deformation happens when gear teeth are just hammered into a different shape as a result of heat or repetitive smashing. Here's an example of micro pitting and frosting that you might see as new gears are being broken in. Pitting occurs when metal fatigue cracks appear in the surface of the tooth. This is generally just normal fatigue over hundreds of thousands or millions of cycles. Here's an example of severe pitting. That's enough background, I think. Um, the parts are all cleaned up, ready to take a look at, and we'll do that now. We'll start with the bearings. As a general rule, uh, I just replace these things. The two big ones here are about 12 bucks each. The smaller ones are five or six dollars. It's just not worth the grief or the risk not to replace them. One of these small roller bearings uh, fell out in pieces when I pulled the cluster gear shaft. Not only is the bearing destroyed, but the surfaces that the bearing was riding on are also scratched up as you'll see. There must have been some sort of catastrophic event to cause this damage. I see on the spacer there's some obvious rubbing. 
and maybe it caught on the edge here and destroyed the bearing. I will be putting in all new bearings and a spacer. Before we look at the gears themselves, let's examine the bearing surfaces. This is what was left by that destroyed roller bearing. And as you can imagine, the cluster gear shaft is also galled up and I will be replacing that as well. The next surface to check is where the pilot bearing goes on the main shaft and it has some old scarring here as well so that also I plan to replace. Any shaft bearing surface that's scarred up will reduce the expected life of the bearing. We've already disqualified the cluster gear because of the bearing surface but let's look at the gear teeth on these gears and see what we find. Let's begin by looking at first and second gear on the cluster. There is significant pitting on probably 60% of the teeth. Damage is occurring all along the contact line on both the flank and the face of the tooth. This is surface metal fatigue and cracking after thousands and thousands of cycles. Another couple of teeth with similar damage. The nice involute tooth profile we talked about earlier is totally gone. This pitting causes lots of noise in the transmission. Here is a tooth with very deep pits. About 40% of the teeth look like they're brand new. Don't know why exactly, maybe some kind of a misalignment where one side got heavy pressure and another side not so much. Could have been misalignment caused by the bad bearing. All the teeth show signs of plastic deformation when the slider gears crash against these gears during a shift. Of course, that never happens when I'm driving. This gear is the first and reverse slider gear, and it looks like a fairly new gear. Most of the teeth are very good condition. However, there is pitting on about a half a dozen teeth starting on one edge. I don't believe this is normal wear. This, I believe, was a new gear, and it's being destroyed by running it against an old pitted cluster gear that we just looked at. This is the second and high sliding gear. This gear is not showing severe pitting yet, but will if it continues to run on that badly pitted cluster gear. This is micro pitting and frosting. When new gears first begin to run together, there is a period of time where small imperfections in the face of the teeth are burnished and hammered down to spread the load over the total face. Once this break-in period is over and the load is stabilized over the tooth face, gears can run a very long time as long as they're not abused and the oil is changed. This is the reverse idler, which typically gets very little wear. I did notice one scratch going vertical along the tooth, which is unusual probably due to some debris in the oil that got caught between the gear teeth. That's why you change your oil. I plan on replacing all these gears, but I might keep this reverse idler. It does not get a lot of use. This main drive gear shaft was perfect. No signs of wear on any surfaces, and I know the gears ran against good gears on the cluster gear set. It must have been replaced recently. So, out of all the shafts, gears, and bearings, I am only going to keep the main drive shaft. I finally just decided to replace the reverse idler and the shaft as well. Take a good look at the casting. Make sure there's no cracks or breaks or any kind of abuse. There are two bosses inside the casting that position the cluster gear set. Make sure they look okay. This sparkly stuff at the bottom of the casting is debris from that destroyed bearing. I'll make sure I clean that out thoroughly. These are all the parts used for the transmission tower. The spring and the spring retainer are likely to be fine. They don't get much wear. Rivet pins might need replacing. Use your discretion there. Take a look at the plungers. Make sure they're nice and round. They're very inexpensive to replace. These look very good. 
the shifter shafts may have where where the plungers engage and disengage from the detents. These look okay. The ball on the end of the shift lever is supposed to be about 490, about 10 thousandths less than a half an inch. This looks pretty good, but I rebuilt it anyway. The shifter forks almost always require some rebuild. They're supposed to be half an inch clearance, which both of these are right on the money. But both forks have quite a bit of wear, as you can see from these photographs. And I'll have to rebuild those. Worn forks will cause sloppy and frustrating shifting. The forks themselves uh, look pretty good, only maybe a thousandth or two wear, so I'm not going to touch those. The tower casting should be checked for cracks and abuse. This one looks really good. We'll get these new parts ordered, and the next time we'll put the transmission back together and get it ready for putting it in the car. Before I leave, though, I want to share with you some opinions I have on just the general rules about evaluating these parts for replacement. And here they are. Inspect the bearing surfaces. So if a shaft has got uh, scarred up surfaces that a bearing is going to go on, you're going to have trouble with that. You need to replace that shaft. You should replace any gears that are significant wear or pinning. Use your discretion here. If you've got, uh, if you only run your Model A 50 miles a year and you don't mind the noise, then pitted gears are fine. They'll last a while. But if you're putting a new gear against an old gear, that's a mistake. You gotta make sure their good surfaces are rubbing against each other. Replace all the bearings. You can replace all the bearings for about 40 bucks. It's just good insurance and good policy. You know, for an old man like me, as much trouble it is to get the transmission out of the car, you could just replace everything. You can replace every single part except for the casting and the transmission for less than $1,000. So if there's any doubt, replace it. Now these are my opinions. Everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I'll stand behind these. Now, there are also facts. If you put a brand new bearing against a shaft that has got pitting on it, that shaft will prematurely destroy the bearing. Same story for the gears. For both of these, you can imagine, if you have a perfect machine surface, and you put some oil on there and you put another perfect surface on it, that will last a long time working together. But if you take that same surface, put some oil on it, and then put a brick on top, that brick is going to destroy the, the perfect surface very quickly. And finally, if you've made it this far, leave me a comment. I appreciate those. We'll see you next time.